Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and welcome to part 31 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. That was the sound of Kisner trying to get our attention, so let's see what she has to say. Alright, this guy has something to discuss with Kisner. So, she's repeating that he was... Basically, they have a conversation and she gets out of it that he was injured in an accident, which is very unfortunate. And, due to that, he can't work properly right now. So, due to his expenses this week, he needs to earn some money somehow. So, he's asking her if she knows any good way. As it happens, she does know of a good friend who is looking for a few hands at the moment. It's pretty simple work, but there's a lot of it. And it's and he temporarily needs people to lend him a hand. This kind of thing is something you can do out of your house, so. It would probably be better for his body if he solely dedicated himself to healing, recuperating. But if he needs the money, this is fairly good work and it's better than doing his proper job, at least on his body. Furthermore, his family can cooperate, so... Alright, great, thanks. If I can do this, then my wife and child can eat. Well, yeah, that's important. Okay, then. So, in order to get this done, he's go she's going to be back in a few moments with her employer. Great. When she comes back, she, he'd like her to meet his child. If this is the same guy as before... No, that was a different guy. I'm thinking of a different person. Well, they have the same arms, except the other guy was hairier. Anyway, Kisner says, yes, she'd like to see how much he's grown. So Avaro gets introduced to him and gets a bit of help in something or other. And once that's all over, Avaro thanks Kisner for all her hard work. Well, she doesn't need thanks. After all, she's doing it because she likes it. Well, she is the one who kind of took the job of handling the people around here, so she's been a big help. After all, Avara likes to hang out in his workshop all day. He doesn't know most of the people. Well, her work with the knights is not so busy since most of the other guys do patrols. Yeah, yeah even though she's not being paid very much, she's always helping out. <laughs> well, this is where she lives. It's only natural. Well, 
Well, since it takes some work to settle into a new place, even though it takes a lot of work to settle into a new place, everybody seems to be happy. And they happen to like the view. Yeah, since the castle moves around, they get to see new scenery pretty often. When they lived in Rikbel, there were walls all around. But she can't really put her finger on it, but it's a lot different than when she was working as a knight back in Rikbel. Hmm, so, Avar asks, what's changed? Yeah. yeah, everything is kind of going blind, flying blind. Well, there are a lot of people who are happy, there are also a lot of arguments, probably because there are more people. Now, for instance, one of the problems she has to deal with is the punishing of misdeeds, but it's rather difficult because if it's just punishment, then neither the criminal nor the victim is really fulfilled by the exercise. So, when people are gathered together living, it's not very simple. When they were in Rickbell under Gilish's leadership, she was able to do it because there was a certain order that she knew and could uphold. Because in that night group, her role was fixed. If she just concentrated on that, she would be doing her best. Or she would be fulfilling her duty to others. Well, even now she's fulfilling a pretty important duty now. It's still, she feels like her power isn't enough sometimes. Especially recently, she's had to mediate a number of disputes. Because everybody's in a new place here and their personal space isn't as fixed as it was before. They have those kind of disputes. So she's frequently called on for intermediation. She can't really listen to one side and that would be bad. So she has to listen carefully and consider things Intermediation is outside of her specialty and she's finding it hard. Well, they do need somebody to do, to do this for them. And it's really helping Avaro out that they're counting on Kisner for it. And in any case, it is kind of to be expected when you're forging a new order. As you get more people, there are certain to be bumps and bruises in the growing process. So, Yes, we're trying to gather this into a place where everybody can live. 
and somehow forging an order that everybody finds easy to live in. Yeah, and to that purpose, she's doing her best to get these new people in order and not cause undue uh, hardship on f or leave too much on the shoulders of Fia Navarro. Well, if she's working herself too hard, she doesn't need to keep everything from us. But anyway, in this particular incident, that guy was able to get some help because of her. <laughs> this kind of work is actually well suited, Navarro thinks, to a kind person such as Kisnir. Really? She thinks that she and the Knights should be worried about the people's security rather than these kind of things. Well, this is also necessary. If there are any circumstances that are bothering people, there needs to be people who can solve their problems. After all, if they had to solve their problems by themselves, it might take a lot of time. After all, there's somebody here whom you can discuss these things with easily. That's really a reliable feature here. Since people get to talk to her like this, they feel safe after a fashion because of it. <laughs> yeah. Kissner says that it sounds like Avaro is speaking from experience. And yeah. He and Fia were... Well, he for one was judged a lot due to his lineage. And Fia's got her own problems running around proclaiming herself a goddess. So, him getting used to people in a peaceful setting is actually a new thing. Although he had some order of peace before, he always had this sense of hostility behind him. So anyway, Avaro and Fia may not be reliable in this particular function, but they are the responsible parties in the castle. He doesn't want to leave everything on Kisnir and the Knights, so... He is going to keep trying to do what he can to support them in their endeavors, too. And anyway, in his craftsmanship, finding rare materials and stuff is something you can talk to them about too. So there aren't a lot of times when everything goes as you goes easily right away. There are failures and sometimes you gotta trial and order your way things your way through things. Yep, so that's what it means to learn and grow. So she was a bit down about being unfamiliar, but she was being too hard on herself. Thanks to Avaro. Well, she thanks Avaro. Avaro says thanks to you too. <laughs> All right, so the feeling is mutual. 
また今度ゆっくりと食事でもしようその時はまた手料理を振る舞ってもいいぞ Alright, gotta run Let's have dinner at my place again I'd be glad to cook for you Ha 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 She cooks like I cook Oui Thanks a bunch I'm looking forward to it As soon as I have the opportunity, I'd be glad to. Kisner doesn't notice that he's really、uh, faking his expressions there. And she calmly walks away. So, in a certain village on the border of Influ's kingdom, we have Katarito wandering around. There are people who see her, and she's a pretty rare sight, but most of the time they look and then look away as if they hadn't seen anything. And even so, she doesn't like being looked at, so she kind of clings to walls. As And edges of places as she passes. She had never left her hometown, so she's never been to a human village before. This is her first time seeing these type of buildings and these type of merchants, and it's a little scary for her. Oh, and she's hungry. She can smell food around here, and that doesn't help. And naturally, she's hungry because she didn't have any food, and she hasn't been able to find any food. Back home, she didn't have to worry about this. If she was hungry, she just had to wait for the next meal, and if she couldn't wait, She would just ask someone. But now she can't produce, she can't prepare food for herself, and there's nobody who would listen to her if she just told them that she was hungry. She sees foods here and there. In shops and windowsills, but she knows she doesn't have the money to buy it. What'll she do? If only she had money. So, unable to stand it, she ducks into an alley to get away from the scent of any foods. Stray dog. And when the dog growls at her, she startles away. <laughs> she returns to the street, but there's still so many people there. She just travels along next to walls until she can find another place. And finally, she finds a street where there are few enough people. But in front of her, there are a couple men arguing loudly. So, no matter how many times he tells this other guy, he just doesn't get it. So, no matter how many times he tells this other guy, he just doesn't get it. Mr. Ugly is saying. That this saves our friend the trouble of taking his goods to the next town. Should be good for him, too. <laughs> He's having none of it. Well, because of this loud conversation, Katorito has gotten scared again and crawls into a nearby carriage. So, hiding her stuff amidst the miscellaneous knickknacks, she finally gets calmed down a little bit. The other, the men outside continue arguing.
けばいいかわからないし So she's still hungry and she's tired. And no matter how far she runs, she doesn't know how far to go. So she curls herself in a bob, in a body, in a curls herself up in a ball. So she doesn't know what to do, and she's getting down thinking that she really is nothing but a failure. All right, enough of that depressing crap. Oh, it's a important shoe. So, what the old guy's offering is what the old guy has his fit is very important to finish goods. And he's got customers waiting for the, their delivery. He can't just let them get diverted off into the black market. Yeah, and furthermore, these guys and their company have stood him up for work he's contracted with them before. He doesn't trust them. Yeah, but we can pay you here. Alright. Quit making him say repeat himself. You're in the way of his com his uh, trade, so get the hell out. Well, he finally did it. So he sighs and starts heading back to his carriage. <laughs> Alright, so that ate up a lot of time. And he's still got a lot of trade to be doing here around here. So, heading back to his cart, he heads for the bag of, bag of medicines that he had prepared. Huh? Hey, the girl has a shadow cast on her. Anyway, in the dim light, he's able to make out a figure he doesn't remember. And that, he does actually... You know, it's some girl that he doesn't know. Now, he does have knowledge of her species, but he's never actually seen one. So it's hard to believe she'd, there'd be a child here. The dragons usually live up in the holy mountains. And it's unthinkable they'd be down here in a human town. And furthermore, she's just a kid. So young she shouldn't be away from her parents. Alright. Or not. So she notices him but just stays there. Looks down again. Like she's given up all hope. So, how'd she get here? But, at that moment, a voice from outside comes in. Hey, Jisoo! If you want to get a message from the south, you know what you're doing? Some passerby here has heard that he's selling medicines from... from up north. Well, old guy's in a spot, so he makes up his mind. Oh, no. The dragon girl is still rolled up in a ball, and she's prepared for whatever happens here. She's worried and biting her lips. So the old guy pulls up a, a hemp cloth covers her up and kind of flattens her body out. Just stay quiet in here, missy. He smiles at her and she does what he says. Anyway. Yeah, 
Now he's saying uh, sorry, but he's already sold out his medicine. The guy also asks for other medicines, not just from the north. And sorry again, but he's got to be going. He's got important goods to deliver. So he kind of just heads his cart out of town like that. All right, after a while the sun starts setting and they've gotten good ways away from people and houses. So this should be a good place. This should be far enough. But geez, he's going to have to camp again. So he heads back to his carriage and pokes his head in again. And now his shadow's gone. Oh, whatever. But he told the girl to stay there quietly and she stayed there quietly. So, where's she going? She doesn't have a place to go, but she was told to go far, far away. Well, that's pretty hard on you. But in any case, the old guy is also headed a long ways. The girl's stomach growls. And she says she's sorry. <laughs> yeah, of course your stomach's empty. So, from one of his bags, he pulls out a chunk of bread and tosses it to her. Alright. He doesn't have anything better than this, but it's better than nothing. Go ahead and have it. Oh, isn't she cute? She hesitates for a moment before she starts eating it. She continues to cry and her nose is running. Well, today they're going to go a bit further before camping, but she can stay in here and sleep. Thanks. <laughs> By the way, what's your name, Missy? Alright, that's a nice name. Go ahead and eat up, Katorito. So, the old guy gives one of those old guy smiles and they start the carriage up going south. Let's see. That means if they start at the border of the country and they're going south, that's either the south border going south or the north border, which is way the hell up there. Well, anyway, I'm sure she'll find her way to us somehow. Alright, so we're visiting Uragaru Twin Peaks again.
This is mostly for gathering stuff. And we've gotten a long way through a forest. Well, she's having fun on this little excursion, but most everybody's kind of playing around, particularly Fia. Hey, Fia, don't go just yawning around like that. There are bug will fly in your mouth. It already happened. Twice. Jeez. Let's try to be a little bit more cautious. And there's more he wants to do here today anyway. Really? Really is not what you're supposed to be saying here. And Miki is kind of thinking that Avaro is also kind of out of it today. Yeah. Since this morning, he's had this bedhead going on. Are you serious? You should have told me earlier. Well, Avaro thinks the bedhead was cute, so... She hardened her heart and re refrained from telling him. Yeah, you just wanted to see me all disheveled. Mm. He really wishes somebody had told him. So, are we going to be going further? Yeah, that's the plan. Maybe we can get through these this forest so we can see what's around on the other side. It'd be nice if we found some new materials. Alright, let's explore. Together with Avaro who hasn't fixed his bed head properly. Come on, it's not fixed. And he fusses with his hair as he goes. So, they keep going through the forest, and finally they get to see a pure white snow mountain. How amazing! Yeah, we're all struck by this. Well, it's gotten pretty cold. Probably thanks to the mountain. Hey, yo, what's wrong? Yeah, uh, she's gotten sleepy all of a sudden. Yeah. So she's not good in cold weather. Since we've gotten this far, we're gonna head on to that snow mountain. Gonna be okay? She's fine. This is nothing to her. She doesn't look fine at all. Okay, once the battle starts, she's fine. Okay. But if you're having a hard time, just tell us. Ah, uh, Fia's got an itch. If you need to sneeze, just hurry up and do it. Oh no, it's something coming out of her body. Point. Drowning in Yuki. Even though we didn't call you out, what are you doing? Yeah, slap a bitch. Yeah. Uh, anyway, don't act so surprised. After all, she used some of her power in order to come and warn you. 
、uh, sorry. So, warning? So, she senses somebody who is like her. Of the same type. Probably a Yuki, right? But they've got a pretty bad mood about them, so. Later. Hey, what about. She's gone already. So, she's warned us. So let's take care as we proceed. And that will end it for this time, YouTube. I will see you next time.